Welcome back, everybody. This week in America on the Blue Funk Broadcasting Radio Network. Great to have you with us on the program. Of course, website thisweekinamerica.us. Guest on the show as mentioned, Travis Waters, author of the book, The West Coast Kid, My Redemption. His website is thewestcoastkid.com. As I mentioned in the beginning, a story of a high school athlete. He had everything ahead of him in terms of basketball. Possibility of playing some uh, Division One basketball across the country. Got involved in drug trafficking, trafficking, went to prison, devoted his life now to going out as a motivational speaker, youth counselor, traveling all across the country. The book is an excellent one, The West Coast Kid, My Redemption. Travis, welcome to the program. Pleasure to have you with us. Thanks for having me, Rick. Help me. Thanks for helping me spread the message. Well, it is so, the book is, is just fascinating because it really talks about the problems that you made in your life. And I know a big thing with this is, is getting the book available out there to as many youth centers, schools across the country, going in and talking to kids because you've got an experience they can relate to. I mean, you were a top jock. You were all ready to go. And suddenly your, your, your life took a, took a real turn. What response are you getting from kids when you talk to them? Oh, it's, it's overwhelming. It's amazing, actually, that, that they find my life story so inspirational and, and interesting that, you know, I, I sometimes can't believe that it's me. Um, they just, they, uh, a lot of the kids have never read the, even read a book from cover to cover. This is the first book they've ever read cover to cover, and it's opened their eyes and inspired them to read other books. And it's just uh, it's amazing the feedback I've gotten from parents and teachers. Kids turn their lives around. Kids that were hanging around the wrong crowds, uh, uh, drinking, smoking pot. They read my book. They don't want to be anything like the West Coast kid. They're back in school. Parents thinking me, teachers thinking me, uh, counselors thinking me around the country, and just it's it's saving lives. It's saving lives. It's it's amazing. Really. Well, and so many people as they read the book can relate to to the childhood. You had a rocky childhood. I mean, you're yes. like just a, a, a basically a newborn at that point, and your father burns the house down. Yes. I, I, Yes, he did. I was uh, two years old. That's what. That's what actually what we moved down from North Carolina to Naples because of that. Also, was one of the reasons. And uh, a lot of kids can relate to me with their parents, alcoholic father, and all that abusive fathers hitting their mothers and stuff like that. And, and they can just they feel like you know when I talk to the kids, I usually sit down in front of the classroom in a chair. I don't stand up on podiums and stuff like that. I'm one of them. Well, yeah, and so many people, once they experienced an abusive relationship, uh, in your case with the father, you see the problems with the, your father beating up on your mom, that type of thing. It scars them for life so they can relate to that. You're able, you were able to get through that rocky road getting to that point, but able to get through that. In fact, there was one point, and I think you were, what, four years old when you first became aware of, uh, of abuse that was going on in the household. Yes, four or five years old. And I started realizing it and understanding it, and, and, and I was scared, you know. And, and a lot of the kids tell me that uh, that they uh, have experienced the same things, and they, they're, they're inspired the way I came through it and how I continued on my life. And, you know, and I still made mistakes on the way. I made huge mistakes. But they, I tell the kids that you'll have nightmares the rest of your life for that. That never goes away. Well, and you talk about one of the nightmares when your mother actually shot and killed your father, and you talk about that, and obviously the memory is like this just happened a couple of days ago. Yeah, it was actually therapy for me in this when I wrote this in the book. So I never I never had therapy growing up as a kid. You know, like nowadays that happens to family. You, you got all kind of counselors in schools. Well, back in the day, we didn't we didn't have any of that. So that was actually my therapy, and uh, it was a. Uh, a, a, a big release off my shoulders to get out there, and I wanted kids to know that this if that happens, you can still move on. You will go on with your life, and you will, you will, be, you can become something. The book is the West Coast Kid: My Redemption. Travis Waters, our guest on the program, thewestcoastkid.com is the website. Book available all across the country. Amazon. You go to the website, get information as well. Of course, information at our website, thisweekinamerica.us. In fact, there was a period there, and when you think about the damage that an abusive relationship does in terms of parents at home, you actually gave some thought to taking your father's life as well. You were so upset with the way he treated your mother. Yeah, I wanted it. I wanted it to end. I wanted it to end, and um, I was gonna. I was gonna uh, throw a radio, and I saw a show, and I wrote that in the book. I saw a TV show of it throwing a radio into a shower in the bathtub, electrocuting. A person, and and I thought that you know I wanted it all to end because I felt like I couldn't do anything to protect my mother. And then she, uh, she actually beat me to it. The sheriff told her to get a gun and protect herself. And next time he does it, it's self defense. And she did. She couldn't take it anymore. She she wrote. She talked. She was the first time she'd ever talked about that was in the documentary, and she talked about uh, why she did it, and she had to do it to protect herself and her kids because he would either kill her or she was going to kill him. And mom finds a new boyfriend, and your reaction is so much like is similar to so many people you yeah. talk to that 
you have such a distrust for for men, especially yeah, like, in that like father him. role. You did you you didn't like the guy right off the bat. I didn't like him. I didn't trust him. I don't. I didn't trust men. And and, and, and I tell kids that that's just a normal reaction. You're going to have that. Regardless, if you see your mother getting beaten, choked to death, all that, and then you see your actually physically shoot him six times, you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna hate men. You know, you're, that's how it is. You're gonna hate men. And I tell them that you you will too get over that. You will overcome that. And sometimes you have to do that alone. You talk about the reaction of the kids in the neighborhood after your mother shot your dad. All of a sudden, you're outside, and kids are going inside yeah, rather than even, interacting with you. Yeah, they wouldn't. Uh, kids I played ball with every day, and up in front of down bicycles every day on the streets, they wouldn't even. They were scared, I guess. I guess they were, you know, kind of uh, uh, scared about what happened and didn't know what to expect or think. And so, yeah, they, they, they ignored me for a while there and then uh, started hanging back out with them and, and getting on track, you know. And, and that's what, why I got into sports because it took my nightmares away from that, from the beatings when I started playing sports. I didn't want to go to sleep at night. I have nightmares, so I'd lay in bed, throw a baseball flip on a basketball on the ceiling until the sun come up. Well, it's interesting in the book, The West Coast Kid, My Redemption, Travis Waters, our guest on the program. The website is thewestcoastkid.com. In it, you actually talk about the first time you really were aware of crowd applause and and, and excelling at sports, and and that was in the third grade. It was, what, a a field day there, and you got a bunch of ribbons, and people were actually rooting for Travis that day. Yeah, when that teacher put me up in front of that classroom, (laughs) and I won the whole thing for for our school and our grade, we won the field day event because I won all the first-place ribbons, even against the older kids. I knew right then that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to play sports and be in sports because I say I never, I, I didn't know that I was that much faster and, and throw balls further and jump higher than everybody else because I never played. I was playing sports. Well, you've got, yeah, you've got that where you've got the sports and you've got this is really something now. I'm connecting with everybody. I'm I'm really happy. At the same time, where you're living there, you're exposed to to drug trafficking, to drug smuggling. Uh, you talk about holes in the book. You're actually what age ten when you first realize what's yeah. going on. Talk a little bit about that because that's that's as much part of your your background as anything as you're growing up. Yeah, I, I grew up down here in Naples, Florida. It's it's uh, ten thousand islands, Everglades. It's it's the uh, smuggler's paradise back in the day, seventies and eighties. And uh, I uh, grew up around it. I'd see it when I was little, you know, ten years old. When I first saw my first load coming in, that uh, guys were arrested in the th- in front of the boats, and my mom said those are Drug smokers, you're not ever mess with drugs, or you're going to go to jail. And we lived two miles from the from the water, down a, called Bayview Park, about a mile and a half, two miles. We lived west of that, or east of that, and uh, it was right there in, front, in my backyard. And when I was 14, my older friends and cousins would smuggle. And they brought drugs in, and I saw them with coolers full of money, beautiful girls, beautiful toys, and I wanted that lifestyle. So I was started cleaning boats when I was 14. After a load would come in. 20,000 pound load come in, I'd clean their boats. They would park them by my mother's house on our street, and I'd, I'd clean all the boats, get all the pot off the boats, clean them up, scrub them, bleach them down. And that was my you know, introduction of getting into uh, smuggling, what it was all about. But I never had planned to do that when I was older. I was going to, I was going to college. My dreams were scholarships and college to play for North Carolina. Well, junior year, you get a new coach, and uh, the record wasn't all that spectacular, 4-16, nope. and 16, but you uh, you did quite well, I think, what you tied for that yep. uh, class scoring three record, uh, class, scoring yep. there. Yep. Uh, also, Top do you four. still have the rebound record for the high school? I still have all that, yes. And I and hold the second place record still to this day, yes. I broke my own record with 23 or 27 after I had the 23, and it still holds. Yes. I didn't know that when I came home, so my coach told me all that. Well, yeah, after junior year, you start getting some smaller colleges interested, and then yes. you get bigger colleges interested in your uh, in your senior, senior year. Yes. And you, you've got a great scene in there where it's an all-star game. One of the the rival high schools, the rival high Deion school, Sanders. actually, Deion Sanders is like the star, and you say in the book, and you felt I guarded him well, I, I held my own. This guy's a real athlete, though. Yeah, he. Yeah, I, well, I've been reading a lot about him, hearing a lot about him from South Florida, and, and he's hearing about me from 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 uh, Lee County and from Carter County because he was a star up there, a star down here. And uh, I've been hearing a lot about him, and I knew there was a big game against him, and I knew that you know if I could compete with him because of all the suffering about him, suffering about me, he knew of me, and I knew of him. And uh, I competed against him. I went toe to toe with him. We matched each other point for point. He never dunked on me, and I didn't dunk on him. But he, you know, we we. Uh, match each other, and then they played against the All-Star game together. He, he represented the North, I represented the South. His name, actually, Neon Dion, came from that game. That's, it didn't come from football or baseball. A, a sports writer from Naples named him Neon Dion. That was a game against me in, in uh, Fort Myers. He played a great game that game. I had a knee, knee injury, but I still played and started, but I only scored like 15 or 16 points. 
and, and, and I couldn't play the whole game, but he played a great game. That's where his Neon Dion name came about. The West Coast Kid, My Redemption, is the book Travis Waters. We're talking about the good times, the basketball. Uh, very Within a few months of when that ends, we, we start the, the journey on drugs. It's, it, we'll have uh, Travis back in the program because so much to talk about here that's fascinating. The West Coast Kid dot com is the uh, the website. Book is available all across the country. Information at the uh, at the website. You're saying looking back, you played a, a high school all star game against uh, Sanders. Yes. And and looking back, that really was the end of basketball at that point. You really didn't know it, I guess, at the time. Yes. But that that's where it all ended for you. I was I, I was I was picked to play on the, the national on the junior Olympic team, national junior Olympic team, out of, to represent Florida. I was going out on my boat to go down the Key Wade, where we all hang out on the boats and stuff on the water. And uh, my mother said the school called to the mess to graduate, and that's where. Um, they passed that law in 1985, regardless of what your grades were, you had to go to summer school if you needed credits. I wasn't going to summer school. I wanted money one way or the other. And uh, I, I started dealing in drugs, and at 18 years old, I brought in my first 10,000 pounds, put on the night vision goggles, brought my first 10,000 pound loads in a marijuana from Columbia, and I never looked back. And you, it's interesting because as you're reading the book, The West Coast Kid, My Redemption, and it's just, I mean, it's, it's a movie as, as you're reading the book, I mean, you were dealing with millions of dollars in drugs. Yes, yes, we were. I had a cocaine business up north, Tennessee, Ohio, North Carolina, and then I started smuggling also. I just got addicted, and I got addicted to that, smuggling, and the money. And we were contractors. You'd, the load that we got indicted on was 30,000 pounds. The feds added another 10,000 pounds because they, they, they had the load busted and everything because they were after Pablo Escobar and the Cuban gangs in Miami, and we were the steps to getting him. And um, the, the, we were contractors. Yes, we were making the, that load we were indicted was fifteen, eighteen million dollars, and that was you know we get a percentage to bring it in and get it to Miami, and the, and the rest of the money, most of the money goes to the cartels and the owners in Miami. You get a sense as to how the drugs get here. We get a sense of of the money. Yeah. We also get a sense of the fear. There's a I'll call it a scene in the book where you're talking and you're a little concerned about what's going on. You won't start your truck. You've got somebody else going out to start the truck if it blows up. I don't want to be in the driver's seat. Yeah, I, I, I was. I, I wasn't. We were eating restaurants, and these were the captains that were on the boat that supposedly knew where the load ended up at, or got the last. They they were on the boat with the load, or it was last seen. And uh, we were in a restaurant eating, meeting the Cubans. I had to take them over there to meet the owners of the load because they wanted to see them in person. And uh, I was just going to start a truck up. I said my, they might. They took the truck for 20 minutes, and what they did was they took the bullets out of, their, out of those guys' guns so they wouldn't be able to fight back if they started, and uh, searched my truck for recording devices and stuff like that. That's why they took the truck for 20 minutes and brought it back. And I wasn't going to start it because I thought maybe they wired it with a bomb. We've got a couple minutes left in the program, and we'll have Travis back and go more into detail on that. You've got the fast cars, you've got the fast women, yet I sense you were never really happy at that stage of your life. No, I was stressed out and knew that it was it, all, it was all a matter of time. And, and after that, after the kidnappings and the electrocuted me in a warehouse and all that, I knew that it was over. That it, you know, this is this is I'm going to get killed. You know, I'm, gonna, I, I'm I'm lucky to be alive now. Well, and yeah. I almost got killed in prison. Well, because of my sports. Yeah, with West Coast Kid, My Redemption, Travis Waters, rapidly running out of time. But you say the reality of drugs, and you, you tell this to the kids you talk to, you'll either end up dead or in jail. Yeah. You ended up in jail and a really rough time in prison. And a lot of them, instead of saying, ooh, you actually know Deion Sanders, they held that against you and beat you up because of that. Yeah, they felt like they were cheated. They were making me play against new arrivals and inmates, were, and me being the white kid on the compound, being the best athlete on the compound, I'm told. And out running and jumping and playing in, in sports, they would force me to play against other gangs to win money. Or they would my my contract was either going to sexually assault me or rape me or, or beat me, and if I didn't win money for their gangs, when they found out I played against Dion through other people that knew I played against Dion that was in prison with me, they they uh, thought they were cheated and they would beat me up because of that. Yeah, and I, if I was going to have to play against him, I was stealing the money from these guys in prison. That's what they thought. You so they made a conscious decision at that point. I am going to turn my life around. Number one. Number two, I'm going to help other people. How difficult was it coming up with that decision and then doing it? It wasn't. It wasn't really hard at all. When I was after one of my beatings, I lay in my bed. If I said, if I make it out of here alive, I'm going to do everything I can to be back to the traps I used to be in high school, the All American kid, and I'm going to help uh, uh, kids uh, know the reality of what's really going to happen to you in prison. Not not sugarcoat it. Tell them what's going to happen to them if I make it out of here alive. And I kept that uh, promise. I came home. They started writing newspaper articles about me being the school's first great player and all that. And I threw my coach a retirement party, and they did a story on me about my life, why I didn't go to college and my drugs and everything. 
and then that's when the publishing company started calling me to do a tell-all book about my life to help kids, and that's where I've been ever since. I coach and sponsor kids now, sponsor a bunch of teams. I coach my son's basketball teams. One of my dreams just came true for me because I thought that would never happen. Well, is honesty what sets you apart? Because so many people try, including parents, try to talk with their kids. You're able to talk with them, capture their attention, imagination, and actually have a, a positive impact. Is it the honesty? Yes, it's the honesty because I, I tell them in that you know that book. I, that book is, is, is it tells you you're going to be sexually assaulted if you go to prison. It tells you you're going to be killed in drug business or you drug deal gone bad. You're going to OD. Your life's over. There's no positives comes from it. I, I'm honest about it. I tell them everything that happens to them, okay, and they need to know that. I, I wish I, I was when I'm, I'm, you're, you're, when you're there. You're crying on your bunk by yourself at night. You're by yourself after beatings and sexually assaulted. And it's it, regardless of race. I'm gonna I'm gonna tell the kids what's gonna happen to them. You know, I don't want any kid to go through that regardless of their race. Because it's a night. It's it's it's. I thought I was in hell. I, you know, I really did sometimes. Well, in reading it, it sounds like that's exactly where you were. If you didn't, uh, if you missed the page so talking about where you were, it would it would pretty much be that. Uh, when you come back, we want to talk about uh, your, your coach, Don Stewart, and he said something, you're not a winner or a loser, you're a chooser. And yeah. that is so important. And the message that you're taking to, uh, to the kids you're talking to, the book is the West coast kid, my redemption. The author is Travis waters. His website is the West coast kid.com. The book is available there. The book's available uh, across the country as well. It's interesting. I mentioned in the beginning that you're a motivational speaker, a youth counselor. If this message is resonating with you and you're thinking, I'd love to talk to Travis about reaching out to kids in my school or my youth group or whatever, uh, contact him through the website and get information, thewestcoastkid.com. Travis, will you come back? There's so much more to talk about. Yes, sir. I appreciate that. I l- having love having you in the program. Again, The West Coast Kid, My Redemption is the book, the website, thewestcoastkid.com. You're listening to This Week in America on the Blue Funk Broadcasting Radio Network.